Okay, so today I want to talk about this Onkyo receiver I've got in here for repair. And let me see if I can get you a model number. This one is a TX-SR806. You can hear the sound that it's making. It's got a digital data noise. So how would you go about troubleshooting this problem? Well, let's take a look at the digital board on this unit. This is the digital board in this unit. Um, it has the HDMI connectors attached to it. It has all the Dolby Digital processing. If you look, you can see these two ICs. I don't know if you can see them on the uh, video or not, but they have the Dolby Digital signal or symbol on the ICs. So I do suspect that there is a problem on this board, so let's go about troubleshooting. I'm going to use the oscilloscope real quick just to look at some uh, input-output waveforms. Not necessarily data that I'm looking for, but I'm going to look at the uh, little regulator IC chips that are here on this board. I want to look at their input-output just to make sure that they have smooth, clean DC and that they do not have an AC or an RF radio frequency component on the leads. So let me change the camera and we'll take a look. Okay, so I've got my scope in view now, so I'm just going to probe the input and output leads on these little regulator ICs. I'm just going to probe all three of them. What I'm looking for is just a waveform to pop up on the screen here. So far, these are all looking pretty good. Little tiny waveform there. There's a little RF on that one. Oh, that is not what I'm looking for on the output of this regulator. And in fact, as I touch it, it's kind of hard to hear it on the uh, camera, but it's actually changing the tone of the noise. So let's see, knowing that the tab appears to be ground on this one, this is the input, this is the output, I'm just going to get a little capacitor, just a low value, probably uh, I'm going to grab a, like a 100 microfarad capacitor and I'm just going to put it across that and see what happens. Okay, so here's a 100 microfarad capacitor at 50 volts, that should be more than enough. I've got the leads bent here, so I'm going to put the negative on the tab and the positive as soon as I put it on there. The sound totally goes away. The RF is still there, but I don't hear the sound. But you can see as soon as I add the capacitor to it, the waveform totally minimizes to nothing. As soon as I remove it, then you get that big waveform back again. So let's look at replacing that, that capacitor. Let's try to find it. Okay, so uh, one thing you do want to be careful of, there's so many different types of connectors. I want to talk about this one right here. And um, there's not an actual plug on this one. Uh, it's a matter of, on this type of connector, you press down, if I can. Once you press down, you can see it. Apply pressure. You can pull the cable back out. So it's got, it's kind of spring loaded. It's kind of hard to see it there, but it's spring loaded. Once you press down, it releases the lock. So it's just the pin. So be very careful. Don't get it turned around backwards when you go to insert it back in there. This one's just a simple ribbon cable. Just a matter, there's no release, there's no lock on this one. Just pull straight up. I rock them side to side very gently. When you go to insert them, try not to bend right here because it can damage the cable. So try to insert it straight back into it. Okay, so here's the IC regulator in question. As you can see from it, it's a 3.3 volt regulator. This is the input pin. The tab is grounded and this is the output pin. And if you look closely, you'll see three plate throughs right here. 
Those go through the circuit board. So let me turn the circuit board over so you can see the other side. Okay, so here's the other side of the circuit board. There's those same three plate throughs and they seem to connect to a single trace that connects right to this capacitor, 100 microfarad, 4 volt. Okay, so here's my voltmeter in the ohm continuity uh, setting. So it'll beep. And what I want to do is I'm just going to check from the output pin to those plate throughs to make sure that they indeed have continuity. Next, I'm going to turn the board over and check from the same three plate throughs to the positive side of that capacitor. And I can see that it has continuity there. So I'm going to replace that capacitor and see how we do. Okay, so as with the other video, uh, to remove this capacitor, you could just heat it, but I prefer to just apply gentle downward pressure and just twist it until the leads fatigue. It'll come right off the board that way. Make sure you're using an anti-static mat and that you are grounded when you do this. Next, I'm gonna take my soldering iron and I'm just going to scrape off the leads, add a little bit of solder. I'm gonna scrape off the existing leads. Hopefully you can see that on the video. And then I'm just going to add my new capacitor to the existing pads. I've got it stuck down there. I'm going to add fresh solder, make sure it flows and it's very molten to both leads. It looks great. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it back in the unit and we'll give it a test. And hopefully we have no more digital noise on power up. Just wanted to say, make sure that the flat side all these capacitors are marked with one flat side. It's kind of hard to see here, but on this end, it's not flat, it's beveled. Let me move over to this other capacitor right here. And you can see it takes the shape of the bottom of the capacitor. So the silk screen on the circuit board shows beveled corners cut at 45 degrees and a flat back. The flat back side is always the negative side of the capacitor. Now on this one that I'm replacing, I only had a 16 volt capacitor and I'm not a fan of surface mount capacitors by any stretch of the imagination. I prefer to replace them always with standard uh, electrolytics through hole type capacitors. I, I think they uh, perform much better than the surface mount capacitors, but only when there is physically enough room to replace them. Otherwise, there are cases where you do have to replace uh, surface mounts with surface mount capacitors. Okay, so I've got my um, board back in the set here. I've just powered it on. Let's take a look at the waveforms. Input looks okay. There's the one that had the big waveform on it. Output looks absolutely perfect. Nothing on it whatsoever. So I think with that, the speaker relay just engaged. We have no sound coming through right now, so I think we're gonna be a good solid fix. But just to be safe, I'm gonna uh, take the digital board back out one more time, and I'm gonna change every 100 microfarad capacitor on the board, uh, because I've seen patterns where there may be a manufacturing defect, and they may uh, initially uh, start out with a high ESR, and that could be a problem. So once again, I do uh, thank you for watching this video and hopefully we can keep some other uh, items going, uh, running longer and longer again here. Here's the uh, inside of this Onkyo receiver right here. Hopefully we can keep these things uh, back on the road and out of the recycle bin or the landfill. Once again, thanks for your views. I appreciate all your support, your comments, your questions. Remember NorCal715 at Twitter. And there you go.